I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to show you the Illustrating Bible from Dayspring and Illustrated Faith. And I bought this myself, just so you don't think I was paid to do this by any means. It comes in this giant box, big, heavy keepsake box to store it in. And this thing is huge. It is actually ginormous, nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter for the pages, plus the spiral bind on the left side. This is the size of a normal Bible if you're looking to see what the kind of perspective is on how big this actually feels in real life. And in the box, there's these little panels that have little marketing stuff on them, more margin that you have more room to draw. It's spiral bound, so it lays flat. Square shape, great for social media pics. I have something to say about that later. And thicker pages. I'm gonna do a little bit of testing to talk about that. More marketing, they want you to buy Illustrated Faith stuff. And the translation is Christian Standard Bible, which has never really been in my list of, I can't wait to get a Bible with that translation. So there you go. Not sure where that came from, but it's a different translation. So it's a good thing to have in my group of Bibles. You can see those little marketing panels come out if you want them to. So you have room for tabs and you can put ribbons on your spiral and that sort of thing. I don't do that in my Bible, so I'll probably just put the dividers back in. You can see how thick it is compared to a regular Bible. It's two inches thick. This puppy is not going to any of my Bible journaling events or groups with me. It's just not, it's too heavy. It's giant. And the box is also heavy and adds to the weight. The cover of the Bible is quite nice. It's leather, it's a soft leather on the outside with foiling and embossing and suede on the inside. And then you get into the interior and all the pages have a big, beautiful, wide border. The font is an eight point font that's condensed. And that's comparison to my regular Bible, which is a seven point font. However, the eight point font being condensed means it's harder to read. And the seven point font also has more air in between the lines. So they were clearly trying to cut the page number down at least somewhat for the big Bible since it is so large anyway. The book titles are each in a beautiful big script font. The numbers, however, for the chapters are very tiny. I've never seen a Bible that tried to hide them from me. But again, I'm having eyeball troubles in my old age, so there you go. The paper's definitely thicker. They say it's three quarters thicker than a regular Bible, but lots of Bibles are done on slightly different paper, so it may vary based on your Bible that you use. The uh, spiral here gave me fits, but it was a user problem. It was not the spiral. The spiral worked quite well once I got myself into uh, not trying to do all the pages at once. But there are two empty pages at the end, and I thought I would do some testing on the big blank pages. Kind of wish they had a few more there for us to do some testing with other things, but that is okay. Recently, I did a video where I showed you how to do a testing page that looked like kind of Tiffany shapes using a straight ruler. And this is another way to do a testing page is create circles for yourself that overlap and then paint in each section with whatever medium. And I'm going to test out just really quickly. I'm going to apologize. This is not a testing video, but I thought I'd show you a little bit of how you can do testing for yourself because you should test your own mediums and your own style because how you apply the marker and the paint and all the different mediums is gonna differ by the artist. So you need to test it out for yourself. And what I was trying to see was, would this paper be any different than regular Bible paper in that would, it, would the marker move? These are all water-based markers. And when I use them on watercolor paper, they move when I add water to them, when I touch water and they didn't, but I could add the color onto a block. You could also do that onto a plate or something and use it to dip your brush in to make something that looks like watercolor. But I didn't have a whole lot of luck trying to get any of these markers to work particularly well. I did try and made a, a good faith effort at it and it did make a beautiful pattern on this page that is yet to be completed. I left some spaces open to test other mediums later. But I thought I'd just kind of show you one way to do some testing. And I also tried out some watercolors. And some of these are the same watercolors that I tried in the other video that, again, will be linked at the end of this one if you want to see more about testing colors out. 
I ironed it all to flatten it out, wrote down the names of the mediums that I put in there so I'd remember what they were. And then for the big reveal on the back, you can see that writing on this paper with water-based markers doesn't necessarily work any better here than it does in your normal Bible. However, you can kind of apply some color with a brush using that acrylic block or, or using it as a painting type of surface rather than writing with the marker and it might work okay. Enough of all that. I told you this was not a testing video, so I'll let you do your own testing and let's create a page. I chose to go with Philippians chapter 3. I'm going to read a few extra verses. There's really one little line I want to focus on. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as I've often told you before, and now tell you again, even with tears, Many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. And this is Philippians chapter 3. I use the NIV because that is my favorite translation. While I work on my little sketch, I'll tell you the story behind it. When I opened the Illustrating Bible box and I saw that little panel that had the message on it that said it's square so it's great for social media pics, I have to admit my earthly, worldly, feet of clay heart got overexcited. I got the Bible because a lot of format things about it were unique and different and I thought it would be fun to play with because of that, but I, it hadn't occurred to me that it would make better pictures for Instagram because Instagram likes square pictures better than rectangular ones. And I just was all kinds of excited. I thought this is genius. This is the best idea ever. We should have more square Bibles so we can share more things on Instagram and they'll look better because they're not rectangles and blah, 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 blah. My mind went reeling until I had to just stop. If you've watched my videos for a while, you'll know that one of the issues that I have is keeping my motivations right in Bible journaling. Because it's really easy for me to get caught up in sharing on social media, getting a lot of likes, getting popular, all the cool kids are going to click the like button on my picture. And that is immediately where my heart went when I saw that little bit of marketing. I fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. It's an issue that I have. I don't know if anybody else has it. Apparently from the comments on the video where I talked about it, some of you also struggle with it. So be aware of it. I'm going to make a bookmark to put in this Bible so that every time I get it out, I am reminded to check my motivations at the door. Because I Bible journal not for Facebook or Instagram. I Bible journal not for YouTube. I Bible journal not for any other reason than creative worship of my God. I want to get closer to Jesus. I want to get to know him better. And I want to express my love for him creatively. And that's why I do it. And anything that takes me away from that is a danger for me. And so I have to be careful. So if you're that kind of person, then you may want a bookmark too. So there you go. That's my little story. So what I decided to do was remind myself that I am sold out for Jesus. I may not always remember it, but I have sold my soul to him. I have given myself over to the Lord and I I am going to remind myself of that in this page. So I decided to create a real estate sign. <laughs> I know. The images that come in my head sometimes you wonder where I get things from, but there you go. And what I was doing when I did my sketch was trying to make it look like it was in dimensional space. So the left hand side of each of the rectangles is larger than the right hand side so that it looks like it's getting smaller in the distance in space. And the signposts are there and then I have the sold sign is going to be on top and then down below it I wanted a white sign with a black line inset from it. So that meant that I needed to create something that's going to give me that border on the outside of the sign because I don't want to draw a 
a line around it. So I decided to paint a little bit of a sky behind it, just some blue color, nothing spectacular, just mixed up a couple of blues to try to make some cloudy sort of sky colors. The focus is going to be definitely on the sign that's just giving it a little bit of background and tying it to the scriptures just a little bit. Iron, as always, this Bible is not one that you'll get away with no page prep and no ironing. The pages are not that heavy. They are heavier, so you'll have a little less trouble with some things, but you'll still probably need some page prep for a lot of different stuff. I'm doing my lines afterward using a Micron pen. I love the Micron pens. They are, by all the ones I've tried, they're definitely the ones that I find work best. And I'm using a rolling ruler. It's a little one that I found in an art store, but you can certainly use one that you get at the grocery store, not expensive. But it's great to have a rolling ruler if you're trying to make some parallel lines. And I'm not in this particular case, but it's a, if you're going to have just one ruler around, a rolling ruler has more uses than just a regular ruler so that you can make parallels. So I'm making all my lines after the painting because then I can adjust them. If I had done my lines first, then I'd have to paint right up to those lines. Whereas this way I have a little freedom if my brush slips and I end up making a stroke that I didn't mean to, I can extend the size of a box or the, the width of a post in order to fix it when I add the lines later on. So that's just one of the reasons why I like to add the lines afterward and then see where they need to be. So I have heart for sale in the section down at the bottom and then in the little bar at the top sold out and I'm going to add a little bit more to that because I realized when I put sold out it doesn't really say who I'm sold out to who has the ownership over my heart now so while I was thinking about how I was going to add that in there I decided I'd throw a little heart on the sign itself add a little bit of color and that sort of thing to it while I figured that out. And then I thought, wait, why not just add a little piece of paper? So I took a scrap and drew the shape on there of a little banner to put on the sold out sign. And that way I knew what the size would be. I took my Micron pen and I wrote to Jesus. So I am sold out to Jesus. And then just trimmed it out with a pair of scissors. I'm using little detail scissors, but you can use any scissors for something like this. And then before I glued it down, I just used an eraser to get the pencil lines off of there. So I didn't have pencil lines transferring onto my page. Tested it out to make sure it was going to fit in the spot that I needed it to and look right on the sign. And then I just got some adhesive. You could use a glue stick. This is a tape runner. Lots of different ways that you can adhere a little something like that in your Bible. And then I'm going to tuck it right in here so that the black lines still show on the top and the left. And then I added a little prayer because I always like to add some journaling that gives me an idea later if I don't remember why I drew that image. And here my prayer is asking Jesus to keep me focused on him. Remembering my citizenship is in heaven is a super important part in my journey and I need all the reminders I can get. The Bible tucks back into its box for safekeeping till next time that I decide to use it. And I am turning those marketing panels upside down actually, so that I don't get caught by it again next time. But I'm also going to make a note for myself to put inside as a reminder. I want to invite you to take part in the November challenge that I'm hosting called Be Thankful For. And I have created a list of things in categories that we can be thankful for. I'll be doing some of them here as videos on YouTube and I'll be posting a bunch on my social media as well. These can be photographs, they can be drawings, they can be Bible journaling pages, whatever you want them to be. And there's no real rules just share gratitude because in this world we live in sometimes it's a little hard to remember all the blessings we do have and as we approach the Thanksgiving and Christmas seasons it's a great way to prepare our hearts for all of that. So thank you so much for tuning in to this extra long video. I will see you guys again next time with some Be Thankful videos all throughout the month of November. Take care. I'll see you very soon. God bless you.